Hello, my name is Jamie Thomas, and I'm a medical student at Nova Southeastern Karen C. Patel College of Osteopathic Medicine. I will be guiding you through a high yield review of embryology, anatomy, and physiology in urology using the surgery basics in 4D interactive book. First, we dive into a quick basic summary of the embryology associated with the urogenital system, beginning with the kidneys, which is divided into three overlapping kidney systems. The pronephros is the earliest to develop, but is almost immediately degenerated while the two other systems form. The mesonephros includes the mesonephric duct. And the final system is the metanephros, which forms the kidneys and consists of the ureteric bud, which is an outpouching of the mesonephric duct that forms the collecting system and ureter, as well as the metanephric blastema, which forms the nephrons, which is the functional unit of the kidney. The bladder is formed from the caudal end of the mesonephric duct and the cloaca, which is the dilated terminal portion of the developing hindgut. It then descends into the pelvis after birth. Although the testes originally formed near the kidneys, a band of fibrous tissue known as the gubernaculum, which can be seen as the blue structure highlighted in the picture on the right, uh, it helps the testes migrate into and anchors them into the scrotum. Now we switch our focus from embryology to anatomy, beginning with the kidneys. The kidneys are located in the retroperitoneum. As seen in the image, the adrenal glands are located bilaterally on the anterior superior surface of the kidneys. The second portion of the duodenum and the ascending and hepatic flexure of the colon lie anterior to the right kidney, while the pancreas, spleen, and descending and splenic flexure of the colon lie anterior to the left kidney. And posterior to the kidneys lie the psoas and quadratus lumborum muscles. As seen in the image, the kidneys are divided into five segments, the apical, upper, middle, inferior, and posterior segments. In terms of the arterial supply to the kidneys, the right and left renal arteries branch from the aorta, with the right renal artery traveling posteriorly to the IVC. These arteries then divide into the segmental arteries that supply the various regions of the kidney. In terms of the venous system, the left renal vein travels anterior to the aorta and receives blood from the left adrenal and left gonadal veins, which differs from the right renal vein in that it does not receive blood from the right gonadal vein as that drains directly into the IVC. The lymphatic drainage also follows the blood vessels, and the kidneys are innervated by vertebral nerves branching from T10 to L1. Now we switch our focus from the kidneys to the ureters, which originate in the renal pelvis. The upper segment of the ureter from the renal pelvis to the proximal edge of the sacral bone is supplied by the renal arteries. The middle segment, which is from the upper to lower edge of the sacral bone, is supplied by the aorta, common, and internal iliac arteries as well as the gonadal artery. The lower segment is from the lower edge of the sacrum to the bladder, and that is supplied by the internal iliac and superior vesicle arteries. Something that is extremely important to remember is the course of the ureter from the beginning to the end. Approximately, it travels under the gonadal arteries before traveling over the common iliac arteries and then under the uterine artery or vas deferens. Shifting our focus to the bladder, anteriorly lies the space of Bretzius which separates the bladder from the pubic symphysis bone. Laterally lies the pubic bone and the levator ani muscles. And the structures that lie posteriorly to the bladder and at the base depend on if it's a male or female. For females, there are the anterior wall of the vagina and cervix, whereas for males, there are the seminal vesicles, vas deferens, rectovesical space, prostatic fascia, and the rectum. The smooth muscle of the bladder is known as the distrusor muscle. The detrusor muscle is activated by stretch receptors to help the bladder contract in order to assist with bladder emptying. It is activated by the parasympathetic nervous system and M3 muscarinic receptors, whereas it is inhibited by the sympathetic nervous system and B3 adrenergic receptors. The sympathetic fibers come from the hypogastric plexus at T11 to L2, and the parasympathetic fibers come from the pelvic splanchic nerves of S2 to S4. The blood supply to the bladder is from the branches of the internal iliac artery, known as the superior and inferior vesicle arteries. The blood is drained into a network of vesicle veins. The lymphatic drainage for the bladder follows the superior and inferior vesicle arteries. When discussing the testes, the spermatic cord begins at the deep inguinal ring and ends in the testes. Its contents are extremely important to remember. It consists of the cremasteric muscle and vessels, 
the genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve, the vas deferens, which transports sperm from the epididymis to the urethra, the testicular artery and vein, and lymphatic vessels, as well as the remnant of the processus vaginalis, which forms the parietal and visceral layers of the tunica vaginalis. The visceral layer of the tunica vaginalis surrounds most of the testes. In terms of the blood supply to the testes, the testicular artery is a branch of the aorta, and the cremasteric artery is a branch of the inferior epigastric artery. The testicular vein begins in the testes as an extensive venous plexus known as the pampiniform plexus. The left testicular vein drains into the left renal vein, and the right drains directly into the inferior vena cava. In terms of lymphatics, the right side drains into the interaorta cable nodes, while the left drains mostly into the left paraaortic nodes. The testes are innervated by the thoracic splanchnics arising from T5 to T12. Shifting our focus to the prostate, the prostate is a small organ that is beneath the bladder, anterior to the rectum, and surrounds the proximal aspect of the urethra. It consists of glands and stroma, which vary in concentration depending on the zone within the prostate. The four zones are the peripheral, central glandular tissue, transitional, and anterior stroma. The prostate is supplied blood through the inferior vesicle artery, and it drains into the prostatic plexus which drains into the vesicle and internal iliac veins. Sympathetic activation contracts the smooth muscle of the prostate gland to secrete seminal fluid. And the parasympathetic fibers originate from S2 to S4. When discussing the penis, the corpus cavernosa are located within the dorsum of the penis, one on each side. It contains the cavernous central artery, also known as the deep artery of the penis. The corpus spongiosum is located midline within the ventral aspect of the penis and contains the urethra. The superficial fascia of the penis is known as the coles fascia, which is a continuation of scarpus fascia from the abdomen. The deep penile fascia is a continuation of buck's fascia from the abdomen, and it surrounds the corpus cavernosa and spongiosum. The blood supply to the penis is mainly supplied by the branches of the external and internal pudendal artery. As we switch our focus from anatomy to physiology, please take the time to read over and understand these definitions that are listed. An important physiological topic to understand is the glomerular filtration rate, which is often used to estimate kidney function in terms of how well the kidneys are filtering. It can be affected by many variables, such as age, body size, and sex. But on average, normal GFR is around 100 milliliters per minute. This completes the high yield review of the embryology, anatomy, and physiology associated with urology. Thank you for your time.